So I don't know what y'all are up to. I hope you're having an amazing morning, evening, afternoon, overnight. Fuck, I don't know. <laughs> they just like... I decided there's only 31 of us here. Literally, we can do whatevs. Like, it's fine. Um, I obviously, I'm just sort of rolling with this YouTube channel. And why not? Like, why get stuck in doing a specific type of thing? Um, you know, <laughs> we flexible. Um, and so what I would say is I did not until recently learn how to be by myself enjoy who I am, um, really not think of myself in terms of another person. You know, it was always like, I'm this person's daughter, or I'm this person's girlfriend, or I'm this person's wife, or I'm this person's mother. Um, just being me by myself has been like a really scary, new, amazing thing. Um, I didn't know what I was like by myself without another person. I'm not gonna lie, I feel like I'm great. I enjoy hanging out with me. I think I'm fun. Uh, I have a great time. And um, it, so it's, I'm really enjoying my own company. I never thought that I would ever feel this way. Um, I, was, I was afraid of being by myself. I was afraid of being without people to love me or for me to love. I have so much capacity to care about the people in my life and I want to I want to take care of them and I want to nurture them and it's like quarantine basically shut that down um you know it it just oh I couldn't I couldn't sit there and take care of my friends um obviously I'm still taking care of my son but like I'm not taking care of a partner um, I spent a lot of energy doing that and I didn't realize how much and how exhausting that could be. I know a lot of people consider themselves like empaths. And, you know, obviously, like, that's the thing that child victims of abuse kind of adapt to reading the subtle cues and signs, emotional states, like recognizing patterns like, oh, OK, we're going in this direction. You know, what can I do to kind of like nip that in the butt? And then we become adults and we get in relationships with people. And how often are we reading into a situation? Because we are very aware, very sensitive about what's happening with that other person. Um, I feel like less aware people are not struggling the way that sensitive people are because you know we can tell when someone's not feeling good we can tell when someone's upset we can tell when someone is feeling frustrated and you know often we adapt because that's what we're used to you know we're used to adapting to a parent we're used to adapting to keep ourselves safe and so there can be a situation where we feel controlled by this other person and they may not actively be being controlling I mean I'm not saying they're not like a jackass or something but you know um, when you're a highly sensitive person um, when you've got a background of trauma and you're used to kind of like oh let me anticipate what's gonna happen with my parent let me pay attention to those patterns and you see your partner and you're like, oh, it's my emotional responsibility. Like, I not only do I see this happening, but like, I need to do something about it. We put ourselves in a bad position. Um, I really hated the term codependency for a long time because the definition that makes sense to me in terms of abuse is when someone is powering over you at your expense for their benefit. Um, so there's like that power element to it. And the codependency language didn't make sense to me because like, how are you codependent on an abuser? They're powering over you. They have power over you. Uh, but what I didn't realize was that it's about emotional codependency, not, you know, that the, the power structure is separate. And we've got emotional codependency. 
So we are waiting for the not safe person, the abuser, the, the aggressor, to meet certain emotional needs for us. And we are also trying to meet emotional needs for them. So the abuser, we're, we're reading in. We're going, oh no, <laughs> they're upset. I gotta do something about it. And from what I can tell, less sensitive people are not paying that close attention to the other person's state of, of emotion. They're not thinking that they have any responsibility to do anything. You know, if the other person comes and says, yeah, you know, could you do this thing differently? Okay, sure, let me let me talk about that. Like, let's consider it. Um, but people who consider themselves empaths, people who are codependent, people who are highly sensitive to what another person is doing, they're automatically taking responsibility for their emotional state. I'm thinking about like all the ways that they can like fix it, fix things. You know, what if we just allowed another person to be upset? Good for them. Feel those feelings. Be upset. Let them come to you and articulate it, you know? Instead of being so proactive. <laughs> taking responsibility for their emotional state. Uh, what a different way of being. When we don't, when we feel safe enough that we do not feel like we need to fix another person's emotional state, regulate them, whatever. Uh, when we feel safe enough to be like, oh, okay, you're upset. And I'm, I'm going to stay in my lane and wait for you if you want to come talk to me about it. Like that's, man, that, that's not a thing that like I consider to be an option, you know. Um, very used to paying attention to my dad's emotional state and coming in with like, how can I fix it? <laughs> when you recognize that other people are their own people and you don't have to fix their emotional state. What a whole new world it is. It's okay for other people to be upset. Like if you're in a safe place and you know that they're not gonna hurt you, they can be upset. That's okay. They're entitled to their emotions, they're entitled to their opinion. You don't have to change it. You don't have to feel like you need to do something. Um, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of growth for someone who grew up in a like not great parent child dynamic where you were responsible for their emotional state. But in reality, we can't control anybody. I can't make another person happy. I can't make another person feel better. I can't solve their problems. You know, my ex was highly anxious. Um and I, I would like, no, no, you don't need to worry about this. This isn't true. It never solved the problem because the problem was the way he would think. And that's not a thing that I can fix. And quite frankly, that's not in my lane to fix. Like I'm not, he's his own person. He can, get, he can think the way that he wants to think. He can make decisions the way he makes decisions. Now, he doesn't get too power over me. He doesn't get too hurt me. He doesn't get to harm me. He did those things uh, and did end up justifying them to himself. But from my perspective, if early on I've had the good boundaries to go, oh, this is where he's coming from. It's not my responsibility to change his perspective. I just need to honor and acknowledge like where, okay, this is what's going on and make my decisions accordingly. I wasn't doing that. Also, I kind of wish I trusted myself more. <laughs> you know, I recently um, encountered a person on YouTube, and I thought, you know, like, oh, he seems like he has a lot of contempt. He seems like he's real driving home on the significance need. Like, I need to feel special. I need to feel significance. And I thought, oh, no, you know, maybe I just 
I'm not awakened or aware enough. I really wish I had just gone, um, oh man, red flags. Boop, I'm done. <laughs> Canceled. Uh, that's an area of growth for me. Um, you know, I, again, I've mentioned in other videos, I'm almost 40. I really wish I would just like accept my own analysis of a situation. I don't know why I feel like I've got to have something proved to me before I make a decision. I don't feel like I'm alone in that. Um, but when we accept that the way other people are is not a thing that we can change. Uh, when we trust our own intuition, like maybe this isn't a safe person, we don't need to get all up in it. Um, you know, there's so many people in the world. Why give chances? Why give the benefit of the doubt to people that might not be safe, you know? Or I know for me, I am I feel like allergic to going, mm, no, this person's not safe, you know? And I wait until, wait until they prove it to me. By the time they prove it to me, like some shit's going down. <laughs> like, no, nah, man, we don't need that. Oh, uh, area of improvement for me. Anyway, um, I hope everybody's having a great evening. We really do need to trust ourselves more. Anyway, I'll talk to you next time.